The beauty of mushrooms is that they grow on many types of substrate. Substrate is the largest massive product on your mushroom farm. So what is the best source for substrate? Some can be free, but will these free substrates render the best quality mushroom? What's up mushroom fam? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. Today in Sedalia, we're gonna talk about the huge impact on what substrates you can get in your area, how these substrates affect the quality of your product and the pros and cons to sourcing out these different substrates. The location of your farm has the greatest impact on what substrates that you should be selecting for your mushroom farm. So do you want a byproduct of an industry like a local woodworker, a farm that is creating uh, agricultural waste as a byproduct? Or do you want a final product that is thoughtfully designed to grow mushrooms like pellets or cocoa core? In addition to all of these uh, attributes to the substrates, Genetics is also going to play a huge role in the quality of your mushrooms. Check out our Etsy shop, Fresh Fungi, if you're interested in really procured genetics that will grow on a wide variety of substrates. So now that you've decided to seek out a free and local substrate, there's a few different pros and cons that I want to talk about. So the obvious pro is that you're going to get free and local substrate. So it's not going to cost you anything. You can learn for free essentially with this material, but the trade off is that there's a shorter shelf life. So there's going to be a bigger biomass of contaminants on this product compared to a pellet that's gone through manufacturing. Also, there's going to be the labor that comes with transporting and collecting this product because it's most likely a waste product from these different areas that you're seeking. You're go going to have to spend some energy collecting this and bringing it to your farm. One of the benefits of having this uh, raw material is that it could have more micronutrients as well as more companion bacteria that could help the quality of your mushrooms. Places to seek out this substrate might be a local woodworker. So you're going to want to focus on companies that are using live wood um, rather than like a, a cabinet manufacturer that's using plywood or heavily treated wood, you're going to want to avoid those places so that you can use all natural wood products. Another thing that you might want to consider is the products that that woodworkers making. So there's a difference between if you're um, planing wood for a table, it's going to have more like a uh, curly Q shavings compared to a CNC machine that's going to produce really fine particles. So this is something to keep in mind when you're seeking out these uh, free local materials that you want to consider the differences between how those materials are even made. After you find a woodworker or a local farm, you might want to consider seeking out a, a local compost company. So there's companies like Chip Drop, for instance, that they work with local landscapers and they will collect material for free and compost it for the public but you'll be able to access that compost for free as a mushroom farm to gather those raw materials that are the biggest biomass on your mushroom farm. So if you're considering a final product like pellets, compressed cocoa core blocks or compressed masters blocks, there are pros and cons to using this type of substrate on your mushroom farm. So the benefit of using a final product as your substrate is that it's going to be much more consistent. So your batch to batch variance is going to be 
mitigated by using a consistent input. Also, the availability of pellets is going to be more consistent. So you can just place an order and have those pellets delivered directly to your farm on a more consistent basis than relying on a local manufacturer that you're taking their byproduct. Thirdly, the labor from getting that material transported to your farm is gonna be almost zero. You'll just have to pay for shipping. So that's a huge benefit, especially when you're just one person on your farm and your time is starting to become more valuable. So the major con of using these products is that the, it comes with a cost. Um, it comes with a price and that could be mitigated when you have better systems in place as your farm develops. So what is the best quality of substrate for your mushroom farm? So that's going to depend on the scale of your farm and the systems that are in place that produce the mushrooms on your farm. At first, you might want to learn for free on locally sourced substrates. Then as your farm starts to grow and the quality is gonna depend on the consistency of your substrate, you might wanna to switch to a refined pellet or compressed cocoa core. And then as your farm develops further and you have the systems in place that can mitigate the risks and the costs of using the raw materials, you might want to re-explore those raw materials so that you can have a free product once again. So as your farm develops, you might want to consider a more refined product and then transition back into a free locally sourced substrate when you can mitigate the problems that come along with going that route. So if you're interested in high quality mushroom genetics that will grow on any substrate, check out our Etsy shop, Fresh Fungi, in the description below. Until next time, much love.